Well, 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 my first guest this evening has had an extremely productive few years since his inauguration as Uthran Naharan in November 2011. He has represented our nation at home and abroad with distinction. Now he is spearheading a groundbreaking new initiative aimed at fostering the creative arts. To tell us more, would you welcome, please, the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, ladies and gentlemen. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. And you're in good form, I trust? Oh, yes, indeed. I've been busy. You have been busy? Yeah. Uh, with what we're, we, we now know as Gleoch, which is what exactly? Well, Gleoch, the word is an old Irish word. Uh, it means call. So it is about uh, the president's call yes. to cultural workers of different genres, music, poetry, prose, film, and I sent out a call uh, to assemble what I felt would be the best expression of excellence in the arts from Ireland. So it goes out to the wider world, but it also goes out to the Irish abroad, including those Irish who may not be able to make it back for the gathering yes. uh, uh, during 2013. And it's something that will be able to be used by semi-state bodies. It will be used by communities of Irish people and those who are interested in things Irish all over the world. And it will go out on the evening of St. Patrick's Day. And then, of course, uh, RT will broadcast on RT1 and RT2 on, on the following day. Okay. And what sort of people can we expect to see uh, visiting you and the Oris uh, in this programme? Well, that was the interesting part of it. Yes. Uh, a number of, there are people that I, I, who have established worldwide reputations, but they're people that I've had the privilege of knowing. I should emphasize that really the strength of Gleoch uh, uh, is very much the artists, yes. uh, the people who, who perform with such generosity and skill. It includes people like Tom Murphy in theatre yeah. and Gary Hines talking about their collaboration in Druid. It includes Paula Meehan, the poet Seamus Heaney, Glenn Hansard, uh, Wonderful Imelda May. Yes. Uh, then for their, I think uh, Glenn Hansard, Lisa Hannigan, it goes on and it's on. Quite and a, then, it's quite a mix, and, isn't uh, it? And of course the yeah. script. Yeah, the script. Uh, who uh, I think what we were attempting to do was to, if you like, uh, have people from different generations and yeah. different genres in the, in, in the arts. Okay, well, well we'll have a look at some of the some of the sh of the show in a few minutes' time. But I suppose uh, I, I was, I'm curious to know why. You, you decided to, to do this? Why, why the yeah. President's call? What, what drove you to, to write letters to these artists? And well, I suppose from the very beginning, part of my inauguration statement was about being creative in everything yeah. we do. Mm -hmm. And I hold the view that if people were to look at the excellence that has been achieved in relation to the arts and performers, yeah. often against the odds, but successful at home and abroad, it really is a great example for every other thing we do, including yes. the economy, including trade, including commerce and all of these. So I had this idea and then uh, what happened next was that while there had been suggestions about performances from the Auris, I said, why not use the Auris as a location? We began uh, in conversations with Philip King and where the South wind blows and that happened in a, a back room as well at the back of Vicar Street where I was at, present at the gloaming. Yes. You see the president goes out from the Oris occasionally to yeah. these kind of events. Are you a fan so, of Vicar Street? So I, I've been there a few a times. A few times yes. yes. Uh, I, I am. Yes. But they, uh, I, I go to the concert hall as well. No I know. You, more you, often. You've a bit of everything going on. Yes. yes. So anyway we had a conversation about doing something and then uh, as well as that then the RTE uh, I, we set up a series of meetings. Philip King came to visit me yes. at the Oris. And then there were a series of meetings between people from uh, my own staff, people like Adrian O'Neill and Mary Van Liesert, and they came out. And RTE uh, were very, very helpful from the very beginning. Yeah. And they're the, the main partners in it as public service broadcasters. And then the gathering came in in support as well. And everyone so, in. We, yes. we have a lovely clip of Imelda May singing. Will we share you that will. with our viewers? But you'll also see the preparations as well. And I want to say that yes. is that the, everyone who worked in the Oris was involved. The catering staff, for yes. example. The, the, my own aide comms were ushering people in and out. It was a case of opening up the Oris in a, yeah. in a way. Okay. Uh, and, and the staff, uh, I couldn't 
says strongly enough how, how much cooperation stands right. behind what you're going to see. OK, have a little look at this. This is Imelda May performing at the Oars. Oh, there are wrongs for everyone There's ups and there's downs But you're the one for all my life My true love I found Yeah, you are love I found It's lovely. It's lovely. And of course, uh, Amelda May, who I think pretty much everyone loves Amelda, and, and she, she had a baby. Did she bring the baby with her to the...? It was a wonderful performance by Amelda May. Yes. She had the, her baby with her, and also her mother and father. And Amelda May uh, comes out of a, a great background of... of, of agitation and singing and theatre in Fran around Francis Street. Yeah. Uh, and, but also her grandmother, who would have been involved in the very foundation, founding moments of the stage sure. as a member of Common of Amman. And, yeah. uh, she just... The atmosphere she created, yeah. she just has fantastic presence. But then there were people who wrote special pieces for, for yeah. Gleach. For example, Louis de Poer uh, composed a poem in Irish and in English. And, and then as well, Joseph O'Connor's piece yes. was specially written for Gleach. I noticed, uh, well, I watched a, a bit of a preview of it and you were, you were doing the interviewing for a lot of yeah. it. Uh, how did you enjoy sitting on pretty much this side of the desk? Were you, were, was, it, was it an enjoyable experience for you or was it daunting? Oh, it wasn't daunting at all. <laughs> I mean, I, there were friends, many of them. And, yeah. uh, Maybe it's just as well I stuck to my own side of things. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I found it very interesting. Talking yeah. to Tom Murphy, for example. Yes. And I hold the view that Tom Murphy is maybe in my lifetime one of the most important users of the English language. Mm -hmm. Certainly in a piece for Gleach, he reduced the whole nature of drama to one word. We were t we ha I'd been talking to Seamus Heaney about exile, the migrant experience, and why people find it necessary to distance themselves to be able to write about Ireland and Irishness. And Tom then speaks about longing. Mm -hmm. And I never really f f kind of stood back, you know, when you hear that someone is getting it, just in a single word, he is able to encapsulate sure. so much of what, was, what his plays were about. And then Gary, uh, uh, Gary Hines in celebrating a 30-year partnership uh, between Druid and, and Tom Murphy. The whole point about it was when I think people will see Gleach, what it was. It's a gift as well uh, to Irish people everywhere and those who are interested in Ireland uh, to be proud of Ireland and to be, to be said, look, whatever else has happened, this is something we do to a standard. And the artists came, they, they were generous with their time. Yeah. You, would, you would have had Bono and Christy Moore walking yes. around the house bumping into each other. I mean, it was quite... Oh, yes, uh, we did. Uh, 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 Christy was great uh, as well, talking about, for example, his five years in, uh, outside of Ireland mm -hmm. and what uh, songs about the names of fields meant to him, mm. like Gorta Hogarth and all of these different places that Christy yes. uh, has in his song. You mentioned generations uh, and you mentioned the script, of course, and you yeah. invited the script to take part in Glauca. We'll take a little clip from there. I really li I like this uh, performance and then we'll have a chat about that. Like, again, from, from Glauca. <laughs> So, I mean, do you, would you get to see the script in the O2 or Vicar Street? I mean, who, who, who are you going to see in Vicar Well, they'll be playing in Manchester on St. Patrick's Night, I Great. understand. And but, uh, oh, yeah, I, 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 in what will happen on St. Patrick's Day is that I'll begin uh, with the Mass and I'll go on to the parade. And then I should tell you as well that, that really... 
Clare doesn't just come from nowhere. We, yeah. we regularly have artists uh, in the Oris, and we would have had them anyway for the, for the garden parties. But we've had people like the High Kings, for example. Yeah, uh, they're uh, here uh, playing uh, later uh, on. Yeah. Yes. But we've also, uh, and uh, uh, I've also, <laughs> also Martin's father and, my, and our friend, uh, yes. uh, Finbar Fury, because yes. I've been to see him, with, and I was delighted to see him back in action again just who, before who, he went to Australia. So I've been around these circles for a while. I know. And then who, we also would have individual artists who will be yeah. coming all the time. Who were you, know? you into uh, musically as a young, as a young fellow? I, mean, I don't know if you were wearing the T-shirt necessarily with respect, but who, who did you enjoy watching and going to see or buying records of? Well, you see, it's ages ago. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, that was a good uh, era, by the way. No, it was, no, it was very, very interesting because uh, when, when I was a child down in County Clare, yeah. I, I'm as old as, as, as Dinjo and Cayley House <laughs> and the kind of thing. All hold hands, you know, fasten to hold your partner, advance, retire, swing your partner, all that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> I would have been, and my mother would have been interested, I suppose, yeah. in what you call like classical music. She was very interested in people like Mario Lanza. Okay. But then when I began, you know, remember I have a period before I began writing for Hot Press, for example, yeah. in 1982. I would have been, when I was younger, more a Rolling Stones person than a Beatles person. Really? Oh, absolutely, yeah. OK, that's... And, I mean, that divided, that, that, that told that you a lot about the kind of... Both about my life and my inclinations, I suppose, yes. Yes, yeah. Well, that separates us, I have to say, as a Beatles man, but we won't fall out over yes, it. Yes, no, uh, not at I all. think it would be unfair. You're mainstream, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yes. No, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, so back at the Oris, I mean, how, how are you settling in with, with Mrs Higgins? Are you, are you enjoying it, taking the air of a morning or are you just on the go the whole time? Well, Sabine and I are very happy uh, uh, there now. And, you know, you get, it takes a little while to get, get used to the changes that we, that we made. We, like, like what? We moved, well, we moved from a, a, a house in which we were living a private life into a, a bigger space where yeah. uh, my work goes on like this. I do about four events every day. Yes. And then Sabina attends as many, uh, uh, very, very many of them with me. Yes. But let's say in a year, 8,000 people have come through the Auras in about a 12-month period. Okay. And I would have maybe done to about 250 visits out of the Auras over a 12-month period and then 150 down the country. So it comes to just short of about 500. And then the, the usual other formal things are going on, such as, for example, the arrival and departure of ambassadors, the appointment yes. of judges and all of that. Sabina uh, is very good at it. In yes. a way, because her life was, if her life on, in the theatre meant that, and also her life politically with me, she was always a very public person. We both have been in the public uh, realm for, yeah. for all of so our it's lives. Not such a shock to I mean, even the footage we have of you, I uh, think from Black also, of, you know, walking through the grounds, the beautiful grounds of the, of the yes. Oars, and with your dogs. I presume Shadow is still with us. And I have two dogs. And who's now, the other yeah. one, sorry? Broad is the other one. Broad. Uh, Broad is, uh, is just over a year old. Shadow is just short of five years old. OK, so they're, they're your, fr your, your, your canine friends. Uh, they are. Okay. I, I like dogs. Uh, we did talk about the last time, and I know it's not probably the most pressing issue in your agenda, but at last time we spoke, you went to see War Horse on Valentine's night with Mrs Higgins. What yeah. did you do this We Valentine's stayed at home this, uh, did this you? year, yeah. <laughs> it, it was easier, yes. Uh, but no, did you get a DVD, uh, or what did you do? <laughs> did you watch a movie, or...? Well, we went downstairs, we lit the fire, and yeah. uh, yes, we did watch a DVD, yeah. Can you remember which one? Uh, no. Oh. OK. <laughs> but it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a very, it was very good to, to, to be in. Uh, mind you, uh, our, our foray out to, 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 the, to the cinema, to the pictures, as I call it Yes, myself, yes, yes. To watch War Horse, there was nothing wrong with that either. No, have uh, you been to the cinema since then? Probably not in the audience. Well, I have. Uh, I've been. Uh, I've been to a few, a couple of, uh, yeah. of launches in the Savoy. Lincoln and, and, and probably things yes, like indeed, that. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah. And do you get out? Do you, can you go out incognito in the sense that can you slip away and go for a bite to eat, or is it constantly a presidential retinue? Well, I, I mean, the the point is, I, I long, from the very beginning. Uh, I accept what the job takes. Yes. First of all, uh, it is a great responsibility to be president, but it's also a very great privilege to be both at home and abroad. But it, I, I, to answer your question very yeah. directly, it takes about a half an hour uh, for me to get organised with the, the driver and the security staff and that is, and then we all move off. 
Uh, so they'll be enjoying my musical tastes as well as myself. Uh, <laughs> and it, it hasn't uh, interfered with me going to... I, I've been the other night, I was at, for example, in the, the Project Theatre for yeah. the uh, 50 ti 25 Tiny Plays for Ireland, yes. which is a brilliant project, right. and they were really wonderful. Uh, and uh, So, I no, I, I've, I haven't allowed it to, to, to change the things that I think are important, because it is very important uh, that the president be at uh, n not just sporting events, but other places where, as yeah. I see it, uh, uh, there is great creativity being, being exhibited. Do you like, for example, I do sometimes maybe create some problems because I decide rather suddenly to go somewhere. Uh, I, I had a big reception for International Women's Day yes. and I decided that, that I would go off to watch the women's rugby in Ashburn. And, uh, Why not? We, we, I arrived just in time and I congratulate them and I hope that they finish it all off in Milan on Sunday and slam, they'll yeah. do very well. I yeah, think. yeah, here's hoping. But <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the things that people w would have said about you and in, in the run-up to, to being elected president and then as you got into office, would you be bothered by the restrictive nature of the, of the office you hold? Because you're a man who has strong opinions, you're a man who I'd say on occasion might find it hard not to want to comment in a, in a, in a big and broad, and if I may say so, political way. Does that, yeah. does that ever grate on you or does it bother you or perturb you at all? Not really. It's not political in the sense of a small p, you know. Uh, you, you, the oath of office that I take yes. is that it said that I uh, dedicate all my abilities to the welfare uh, and of the people of Ireland. And that means that I have to be uh, concerned about anything that affects the people of Ireland, all of them. And that's why in the first two years I said I would give preference to community groups and I visited, uh, and I visited a number of schools that are poor, I visited people who are recovering from, in drug programmes and also I visit prisons and yeah. so on. And I'm doing that very deliberately. And why? Because it is what I said I would do yeah. uh, it, during the campaign. It's what I said in my inauguration speech. And my inauguration speech spoke about creativity and that's why we're, we're, we have Glerk. But no, I, I'll tell you what makes it easy. I have a certain advantage of having been a minister in the past and also being a political scientist. And if you know the boundaries, yeah. for example, I don't speak about anything that is being discussed as legislation by the Dole or Shannon. But that doesn't mean that I'm not interested in the deeper issue. So I wouldn't speak about a piece of legislation dealing with, let us say, with adjusting an aspect of social welfare. Okay. But I do feel free to speak about poverty. And I mean, as we go into St. Patrick's Day and as we celebrate music and all of the rest of it, in my message on Saint pa for St. Patrick's Day, I recognise uh, the great difficulties many families have, and also where the burden of poverty is being borne more than others. So I, I think people are perfectly entitled to expect me as president to advance the welfare of Ireland by addressing these issues generally. But I'm not interfering. With, yes. And the government, equally, to be fair, uh, I meet the Taoiseach every six weeks or so, and he briefs me under Article 28 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I'm kept informed of what is happening nationally, internationally. It's a two-way conversation, and I've had no difficulties at all. There's been talk about this week about poverty and with the, with the, with the man that was elected Pope by the Cardinals, yes. who people talk about humility and his relationship with poverty in Argentina, yes. clearly. So that, that's, I suppose, pertinent to my next question, which is that you will be going to the inaugural Mass, isn't that right? I'm going to the inauguration. Tuesday. I'm going on Monday. On Monday. Yeah. To, in to fact, actually, the, the, I had a message today. Uh, if, it's one of the very first messages that Pope Francis has sent. And it says, uh, he said, I have the honour to convey the following message from the Holy Father. I got this from the Nuncio just a few hours ago. Okay. And he says, I am pleased to send greetings to you and your fellow citizens on the happy occasion of Ireland's National Day. At the beginning of my pontificate, I commend the nation to the powerful intercession of St. Patrick and assure you of my prayers for the beloved people of Ireland that they may enjoy peace and prosperity. Franciscus. Okay. Now, it is uh, wonderful that yeah. very early on... Yeah, very early on. Uh, they, they say this, uh, it, it could possibly be maybe one of the first messages. Yeah, it might well be. Yeah. Uh, would you welcome a visit to this country by the Pope? Oh, yes, of course, and uh, I would think that it is certainly uh, during my presidency, when it is appropriate, I, 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 would vi I will visit the Pope. I will also, of course, um, uh, be returning. It's, 
in discussion the, the state visit to, to, to Great Britain. Mm. And are you, are you a praying man? Do you, are you a spiritual man? How would you describe I would, it? I, I, without being uh, uh, in any sense evasive about it, uh, uh, I'm a spiritual person, but I'm very, I, I, I've rather respect very much people's different paths and traditions to transcendent beliefs in different ways. Yeah. And I, I respect that very much. For example, uh, uh, let me give you an example. If, if you have, as I would know, uh, a family at the moment in a despairing condition where yeah. somebody might have lost a job, mm -hmm. where a house is under threat or something, where there's children who would have had expectations that they're not happening. Yes. The decision to go on and uh, to believe in something uh, beyond your immediate circumstances, the of great importance of retaining hope, that's very important to me. And anyone who offers support in believing in something beyond the present circumstances and difficulties, yeah. that's very important. There, so there, I really there are a lot, of, a lot of people watching tonight who lack hope. Well, that is, I think that is one of my own messages about it, is that, uh, is that I, I say, and indeed one of the reasons about the songs that have survived the famine and the music that has benefited from the going and the coming that's involved in immigration, mm -hmm. these are all examples of getting past difficulties, of being resilient and so on. But the other part of it I would make, and I have, when I visit schools, I, when I speak to them about the importance of not only, uh, not never isolating a child, and I speak very strongly about the importance of identifying and eliminating bullying, including homophobic bullying. Yes. But one of the things that is very important, I think, is that people reach out to each other. And I think that as we emerge from a rather fallacious version of the economy for about decades so uh, and as people go on to real things uh, they, they, they discover the need for each other so it's a time for solidarity and we shouldn't be afraid to use these words or to demand solidarity either yeah. okay well look you're going to stay with us for the next performance from glad sure. to say because i think you're going to enjoy it it's a performance tonight by one of the artists who participated in glerk mr martin hayes and he's joined by his longtime collaborator dennis cahill so to perform fiora by pado arida and pjo's real would you welcome please martin hayes and dennis cahill Thank you. 
Beautiful performance. Absolutely. And that's the sort of music that you've been promoting and, and talking about on Gleach and what sort of, what sort of, uh, how do you reflect on something like that? Well, I, I, all I'll say is that my daughter Alice Mary uh, would go from one end of America to another when she was there uh, to hear Martin Hayes. Yes, yeah. Uh, and I think that it is, we're so, it's so wonderful. Yes. Uh, that people are so gifted. I, yeah. I just, I'm lost in admiration. I was saying we should have been in Clifton having a pint of Guinness listening to that with a big fire going. And well, yes, or even in Clare, you know. Or wherever you want to go. Yeah. If you're paying, I'll join you. You know what I mean? I don't mind either. I, I must comment on your suit. It's a good tweed suit. I, have to say. I hope it's a good Irish suit, is it? It's dirty gold tweed. That's what I thought. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> All Ireland winning suit. Yeah. It's been it's been lovely to have you on the show. It's been a pleasure. And thanks for your time this evening. Absolutely. President Michael D. Higgins, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>